Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've always wanted to learn how to knit but weren't quite sure how to get started, this video will show you how. By the time you are finished with today's lesson, you will have learned all the skills necessary to make a cotton dishcloth. Why a dishcloth? It's a small project which can be finished in a relatively short period of time and you don't have to worry about fit. The skills you will learn in this video are casting on, the knit stitch, binding off, and weaving in your ends. Let's get started. In order to make the dishcloth, you'll need 100% cotton yarn in what's known as a worsted weight. On the back of the yarn label, you'll see the fiber content, in this case, 100% cotton, which is what you're looking for. Let's see if I can get that in focus for you. And you'll notice on the label, there's what looks like a yarn skein and it has the number four in it. That's what the size of yarn that you want. That's a worsted weight and that will work perfectly for this dishcloth. I will include links in the description for yarns that can be used for this project, but you can also find the appropriate yarn for dishcloths in any store that sells crafting supplies or has a knitting section. This particular yarn is from Knit Picks and it's called Dishy Multi. You'll also need a set of knitting needles and in the size 4.5 millimeter, which is a US size 7. The needles I have here are what's known as circular needles, which is two needle tips attached with a cord. These particular needle tips are made of wood. Needles also come made of other materials such as aluminum or bamboo and you can use tra a traditional pair of straight needles as long as they are the correct size. I will put links in the description for a selection of needles, but knitting needles can also be purchased in the same type of store that the yarn can be purchased at. You'll need a pair of scissors. Any kind of scissors will do. They can be big, small, whatever you have, as long as they're sharp enough to cu cut your yarn. You'll also need a wool needle to weave in your ends. I have two different types of wool needle here. The gold one just has a slight curve on the end and the silver one is straight. But what you're looking for is a large eye that's big enough for your yarn to go through and a blunt tip so that it doesn't split your yarn when you're weaving in your ends. And now that you know what you need, let's get started on the knitting. You're going to start by pulling the end of your yarn out of the center of the ball. You can also use the end on, that's on the outside, but I prefer to work from the center. Once you find the end, you're going to pull out a length of yarn. For this project, we're going to need 30 stitches on the needle. So make your length approximately 30 inches. I'm not going to measure it, but that looks pretty close to me. Once you find on your yarn where you want to start, you need to make a slip knot, which is going to be your very first stitch. If you don't know how to make a slip knot, here's how you do it. You're going to wrap the yarn around your index and your middle finger, and it's going to cross at the bottom. Then you're going to slip the yarn that crosses over the top in between your two fingers, slip your needle inside it, and then pull it tight. Now you want it snug against the needle, but you also want a bit of play. So you want to be able to move your loop of thread up and down your needle. This will help from keeping your stitches from being too tight when you go to knit. And I'm going to pull out some more yarn from the middle so I have room to work. Okay, I'm going to do what's called a long tail cast on. And you're going to take the end of the yarn that actually is not attached to anything. This is the tail end and the top is the ball end. You want the tail end to go over your thumb when you insert your thumb and index finger in between the stitches. You're going to take your ring finger and your pinky, grasp the two tails, and then pull your needle so that your yarn makes a V. Then you're going to take your needle, you're going to wrap it under the two strands that are over your thumb, 
and then in between and bring it up. Catch the strand that's over your index finger and flex your thumb down. Pull the loop through and let it go and then bring your thumb back into the V and pull it tight. You want it snug again but you don't want it too tight so you should be able to wiggle your stitches on the needle. I'll go through that again. Scoop your yarn underneath the two strands, down through the middle, bring it up, catch your index finger yarn, flex your thumb down, bring the loop through, let it go. One more time. Scoop underneath, down through the middle, catch the index finger yarn, flex your thumb, let go, and then put your thumb back in its original position. We need 30 stitches, so I've got four so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to cast on. I'll go fairly slowly so that you can follow along. And then once we get to 30, I'll show you how to start knitting. It's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, just gonna move my hand down a little bit, sixteen, 17, going a little faster, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, So that's 30. I'm just going to do a, a count just to double check, but it's it's 30. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. Now, this particular dishcloth is done in what's known as garter stitch, which is you knit every row. So once you get a hang of the knit stitch, you can make this and it looks pretty nice. So I carry the yarn in my right hand and the way I hold my needle is I hold it like a pencil, which is known as Irish cottage style knitting or lever knitting. I, I do it this way because I knit for long hours and it's the only way that I've found where I don't get cramping in my hands. So it's not too bad to learn because you already know how to hold a pencil. So you've got that part down pat already. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your needle and you're going to insert it through the first loop. This front part, the, the bottoms of the stitches are called legs. You're going to insert it through the front leg and you're going to go towards the back. And then I'm going to hold it between my thumb and my index finger while I load my yarn up to tension it. So your yarn is going to come in between your middle finger and your index finger. You're, you're going to loop it around so it goes around your middle finger once. Then you're going to flex your ring finger so that the yarn is draped over it. Now, you're going to bring your hand back and you're going to cradle that right hand needle in the meaty part of your thumb at the base. This is going to keep your needle secure. It's not going to fall. You're not going to drop it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pivot your hand so that it comes around and the yarn catches over the needle. So like this, up and around. Then what I, you can do if you're nervous that the stitch is going to fall off, just f slightly flex your ring finger and that will hold it with a little bit of tension. And then take the left needle, move it towards the end, and slip it over the top of the right hand needle and then pull it out. And that's 
as easy as it is. We'll do it again. Insert your right hand needle from front to back. Flex your hand around. Catch the needle. Slide your left hand needle and you can use your index finger on your left hand to sort of help it along if it's a little stiff. And then slide it over the top of the needle and pull the needle from that stitch. One more time. Insert the right hand needle from front to back. Flex your hand around, wrapping the yarn around the right hand needle. Flex your little ring finger down if you like, if it makes it easier, and you can just give it a little push with the index finger on your left hand and flip the stitch off. So we're just going to slowly go. You can watch it and follow along with me. And it's just that easy. Now, what you want to make sure you do is that you push your stitches towards the end of your needle because you don't want a lot of space because what happens there, it makes it more difficult because you're fighting with the yarn. But I, I understand that a lot of new knitters are nervous about getting their stitches this close to the end of the needle because you're afraid they're going to fall off. If a stitch falls off, all you have to do is just put it back on. And while you're knitting, use your hands to control your stitches. So your left hand is just going to be kind of resting over them with your fingers and then your thumb is going to be at the base of the needle and it's only going to let one stitch out at a time. Like this. See? And then you just push your next one. And you knit that stitch. You push your next one. You knit that stitch. And you just go along like that. Now, at first, especially like I remember when I first learned how to knit, it was awkward, like anything. When you first start doing something, it feels strange, it feels weird, your, your tension's probably going to be a bit uneven, some stitches are going to be loose, some stitches are going to be tight. But if you just keep practicing, keep working at it, it will eventually become second nature as your muscle memory builds and kicks in. So eventually, it'll be quite easy for you to make your knit stitches and you just keep going the biggest point is just to relax it's only knitting it's no big deal just relax and form each stitch if you relax then your tension is not going to be as tight I've taught people in person how to knit and I find the biggest thing that happens with people that are just starting out is their t stitches get incredibly tight and it makes it difficult even to get the right hand needle inside the stitch and that I think a lot of that has to do with tension in the hand and they they hold it like it's gonna fall out but it won't so you just relax and we've already done our first row now because this is garter stitch like I said my battery's dying, so I'll be quick. Because this is garter stitch, we're gonna knit every row. So we start the next row same way we did the first one. Insert the right needle, hold it there, tension our yarn, bring the right needle back into the cradle of our thumb, scoop around, and make your stitch. You're going to be doing 48 rows so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on. Once I get to the halfway point, I'm going to show you how to hold, hold the needle with a lot of fabric in it because what's going to happen is this is going to get longer and you're not going to be able to get the needle in your thumb in the cradle as easily. But I'll show you, I'll show you how to, uh, how to do it once we get to that point. So once I get there, I'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm back and we're at the halfway point, uh, which means we've knit 24 rows. I'm gonna show you an easy way to count. Garter stitch isn't too bad for counting because the ridges are very pronounced and it's a good skill to know, just in case you have to put your knitting down and then come back to it much later and you're like, oh, well, roll man. This is how you figure it out. 
each ridge counts as two rows. So you just count up the ridges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You don't count the ridge directly underneath the needle because we counted the ridge at the very bottom. So we've got twelve ridges, which means we've got twenty-four rows. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we're on row twenty-five. So we're halfway there. And we're gonna start it. Now this starts exactly the same as every other row. We've got our needle crossing from front to back. We've got our yarn tensioned. We've got the needle, right hand needle, cradled in the crook of our thumb. We just come around. So get a few stitches. And it's, it's the same. The needle fits in there. It's not too bad. It's pretty much the same as the way it was before, but as you can see what's starting to happen now that as I get more stitches knit we're getting some fabric starting to bunch here and eventually it's going to bunch up so much that it's going to be all mashed in here and that's not too comfortable to knit let's see wrap that twice there so you spread your fabric out a little bit but what's happening to, with the thumb is it's still there, it's still in the same spot. It's just, you push it up so that it, it's, the fabric is between your thumb and your index finger. And that's all you need to do. It still fits in the cradle, it's still not going anywhere. And you just keep, keep on knitting. So I'm going to continue on. I'm not going to make you watch me because that would be pretty boring to watch me knit another, well, it'll be 23 rows now of knitting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off. And once I get finished, row 28, uh, 48 rather, sorry, I will come back and I will show you how to bind off and weave in your ends and we will have a finished dishcloth. So I'll see you very soon. Okay, so I just finished working row 47. There's one more row left to do and I wanted to knit it with you so I can show you how to do it. It's a little different in the first stitch, the way we work the first stitch is a little different and it's because of the nature of binding off. If you knit the first stitch on your last row and then bind off, sometimes that stitch is a little bigger. It looks a little sloppy. So this is the way that I fix it. And what it is, is I don't knit the first stitch. I just slip it onto my right knee hand needle and then carry on like normal. So you just take your right hand needle to slip the stitch and you instead of putting it from front to back, you're gonna slip it through the front leg going from back to front. And it's just gonna go on your needle and then you're just gonna carry on knitting. And then when we get to the end of this row, this is row 48, <coughs> I'll show you how to bind off your stitches. And then we'll weave in the ends and then we'll be done. So I'm just gonna quickly get to the end here. So now we're ready to finish. So we're going to bind off. And what binding off does is it takes all these loops away so that you have a finished edge. So what you do is you knit the first two stitches and then you take the first stitch on the right hand needle and you pass it over the second one, just like that. Then you knit the next stitch with your left hand needle, pick it up, pass it over that second stitch again knit the next stitch, pass it over, knit you, pass it over that stitch, 
pass it over. Um, you want to be careful you're not too tense or too tight. Uh, with a dishcloth, it's not absolutely crucial that uh, the edges are super perfect because it is a dishcloth. Um, and a, a firm edge is, is okay. If you're knitting something that needs a bit of stretch and your bound, bind off edge is at the bottom or whatever, there are other looser ways to bind off, but with this, this is sufficient. It's a basic bind off. It's the most common one. And we just keep carrying along, knitting, lifting our second stitch over the first, like that. And just keep going along. And go along, and we're close to the end now. More yarn there. And And then the last stitch, take that one over. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut our yarn. Leave a little bit of length so that it's easier to weave in the ends. Like that. And then just bring it through the loop. Just make the loop a bit bigger here. I should put the needles down. Okay, and then you're just going to bring that through your loop and then pull tight. Like that, and then there we go. Done. So now that we have that finished, get those out of the way, I'm going to take my wool needle and see even that. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to do a simple whip stitch along the edge. This is a dishcloth, so it's not super crucial that the yarn is hidden away and this is probably the simplest way to do that. You're just gonna weave the yarn through the loops there that are along the edge. You don't have to go until like your piece of yarn's all run out but we'll just go along a little bit here and do that. This is the easiest and you can't really see it because the yarn is white. And then there's going to be a couple at the end that I'm just going to put through and then, so it kind of makes a little bit of a knot. And then I'll do one more. So my needle is going over top of that yarn there. And then I'm just going to pull it tight and then snip it. Okay, and you'll see a little bit, but if you're scrubbing dishes, it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to do the same at the other end. This was the, the tail end that we started with way back at the beginning of the video. And again, I'm just going to do a whip stitch along the bottom. Just to get rid of that edge. Now, uh, there are ways that you can weave in your ends in the body of the work and you would do that more if you were doing like sweaters and things like that just to make it nice and neat but for our purpose here because this is the first project we're just going to do this because it's the easiest way to do it and again going to make a little knot, sort of, and then slip it like that. Okay, there we go. And then one more time. And then one more. <laughs> I lied. This is the last one. 
I'm just going to pull it through like that. And then give it a snip. And we're done. So. And we have a nice little dishcloth. I hope you learned something. If you've never knit before, I hope you followed along with this video and tried it out. And honestly, I hope that you enjoyed it enough that you'll join me again for another how to knit tutorial where I will cover the purl stitch. And um, yeah, if you'd like to join me for that, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when the next video goes up. And uh, if you have anything you'd like to ask or anything you'd like to say, please leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.